Today is a beautiful day. If you haven't looked at the calendar, today is the 10th of October. And what's very special about the 10th of October is that on the 10th of October in 1976, uh, there was an article published in um, Dr. Job, or Dr. Dobbs' journal. It was um, about a version of Palo Alto Tiny Basic written by Li Chen Wang, which is pretty much the first example of an open source operating system. And that was 41 years ago today. So in celebration of Mr. Wang's version of BASIC for the 8080, I decided to do two things. And I have decided to show these on YouTube and post my uh, blog post, um, or post a blog post about um, what I've been working on the last couple of days. But um, I'm just going to dive right into it and show you. I've managed to port Dr. Wang's version of Tommy Basic over to the G80S computer. And I have dubbed it Z80 Tiny Basic version 2.0G. And of course, it was ported by me, Doug Gabbard, in the year of 2017. So, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It works. And we're going to type out a very short program here. It's one that pretty much I think everyone has um, done before. Just take a second and type this in. Okay, there we go. Make sure it's all in there. Yep, all there. Okay, let's run it. Ah, there we go. Some of that old school basic retro goodness. Um, interesting thing about Tiny Basic is it is a very small version of Basic. It fits in about 2K of uh, ROM, and this example does the same thing. Even uh, the version running on my uh, G80S computer here, I think the entire thing compiled was somewhere around 1,992 bytes. So it's well under uh, 2K in size. However, um, depending upon if you want to add any instructions to it, which you very well may, um, it could easily grow to be, you know, 4 to 6K, uh, probably. And the reason why I say that is because Tiny Basic is very limited. You're not going to be able to do a whole lot with it. Uh, one of the big disadvantages to Tiny Basic is that there's no routines for in and out like there is with Microsoft Basic. And the reason why that is important is because with Microsoft Basic, you're able to directly write to I.O. by using your basic programming lang language. Tiny Basic, you're really not unless you have memory mapped I/O, which the 8080 typically would, but the Z80 does not. So I do still need to do some work on this version of Basic, but it is very um, usable for running general uh, Basic programs. Anything that's not going to require I/O, it uh, shouldn't have any problem running those programs and writing simple things. So it's uh, kind of on the same level as running BASIC on an AVR microcontroller. Um, you're not really going to be able to do a whole lot with it without making some changes to it. And that's exactly what I intend to do. However, in the meantime, since it is the 41st anniversary and since I have completely uh, ported this over from 8080 code into Zilog mnemonics and taken advantage of some of the um, uh, Zilog specific instructions, I've decided to release this out to the public. Now, here's a version that I uh, wrote for the uh, G80S. And as you can see, it was modified by me and translated to Zilog Mnemonics, and of course it has a link to my website there, uh, retrodepot.net. Uh, of course, I'll put a link below, and it will have a link to uh, where you can go to download the source code for this. And it has been released on the 10th of October, 2017. Yep, 41 years later. Um, the original was released on 10 October, 1976. But there are a couple changes here that I've made. Um, you know, the big change has been to I.O., but also to um, how the um, 
uh, Z80 instructions are used. Uh, they're used, for example, relative jumps instead of, um, well, relative jumps instead of uh, regular jumps. You save a couple bytes doing that. It's just a more efficient way of uh, using code. But like I said, there have been some changes. And of course, um, specifically, this is the uh, version that is going to be more portable. And uh, there are three instructions that you really need to pay attention to. Uh, the first off is serial init. And of course, this is, uh, stands for serial initialize. This is a routine for initializing your serial port, whatever controller that you're using. You write the code, you plug it in right here, and all it has to do is initialize it and return back with no registers changed. TX ready, which is the um, instruction right below it, right here. This routine is for um, checking to see if the serial port is ready to transmit a character. And if it is ready, it um, goes back, and if it isn't, it just sits there in loops. Um, you're basically waiting to transmit a character, okay? The third routine is the RX ready routine. Now, this does uh, two things. First off, it checks to see if the uh, port is, or if there is a character ready in the serial port. If it is available, it returns to the calling function with the character and the uh, A register and the Z flag reset, okay? However, if there's not a character, it returns to the calling function with the Z flag set, denoting that there was zero character, okay? And th the rest of the um, routine is actually up here in uh, check IO. If there's um, you know no character, it actually returns. And if there is character, it checks to see if it's a line feed. If it is a line feed, it um, you know nixes the whole thing and goes back because um, our system takes care of line feeds automatically. We don't need them for the tiny basic. However, the GADS is set up for it, and I plan on embedding this code into my GADS BIOS. So that's something that will be needed later on, at least for my computer. It may not be needed for years. And then uh, the rest of it for Control Zero and um, Control C, all that's taken care of down here. Now, as far as out C, um, this is where you would make the call for TX ready. Um, there is one section here that sends code out to a I.O. port. It's this one instruction here, out to serial port. Now, that serial port is to whatever serial port you have. So, for an example, um, if you have it at 8 to 0, you plug in 8 to 0 here. Okay, you plug in this number. This is for you to determine in software where your serial port is at. Okay, very important. Make sure that you do that. And then once you've done that, it's ready to go. It should compile. And you shouldn't have any problems with it. As long as, um, you know, your routines are well thought out, you only have three of them. They don't have to be very long. Um, you know, maybe as little as, you know, five or six instructions, maybe, you know, 10 to 15 for the, um, you know, routine to, you know, check to see if the transmitter or the receiver is ready. It really just depends. But, again, that's code that's there. Um, I am plugging this onto my website and my blog post. You can download it, both versions, uh, one for the Z80, one for the um, G80S computer, and um, make whatever modifications you need to in order to be, to be able to use it. Um, the only thing I ask is that if you do end up using my work, that you, you know, at least include a reference back to my website or to this video. And aside from that, enjoy. Um, you know, it's open source great thing about open source is that it's free for the world so enjoy if you have any questions drop a comment below check out the website i do post things on there a little bit more often than what i post videos you'll get a little bit more up to date as far as what's going on in my world what projects i'm using things like that aside from that um you know feel free to uh, check out my uh, store on my website i've got a couple of the uh, beta boards still up for sale um, I hope to, before too long, be ordering a new batch of boards. But either way, I hope that you enjoyed the video. And if you do have any questions, again, just either drop me a comment below, go to the blog, comment on the post there, or you can always shoot me an email. All right, I appreciate it. Have a great day, and enjoy the rest of the week. All right, goodbye.